Okay. Welcome back, folks. So, I'm doing a comparison between the uh, this camera right here, which is the Nikon ZF or ZF with the 40 millimeter f2, and on the opposition is the Lumix uh, or Panasonic Lumix uh, S52. Okay, they're both 24 megapixel cameras. They both have two card slots. Uh, Panasonic has two full frame, uh, I'm sorry, full size SD cards compared to uh, the ZF, which only has one micro SD card and then a full size SD card. Um, the only other thing is um, basically, I would say with the Panasonic, they have a little bit more features in the video department compared to uh, the ZF, but both of their um, menu systems have been updated. They have more features. Uh, I have dummy batteries in these cameras, but I also have all their batteries charged, ready to go out for a shoot to compare both cameras. Uh, on this one right here, is the 50 millimeter f1.8 and the reason why I want to show that is it looks a little bit closer all right compared to a 40 millimeter which is right here okay the only difference is they look the same except that they're a different point of view the other thing I'm going to do is I'm at 4k 30 okay and that's the max that these Elgato cam leaks can uh, do, 4K30. Uh, we got an update to um, eCam Live Pro, and the notice that uh, it was slowing down quite a bit. So if I move around like this, I don't see any stuttering. But if I move quicker, you might see it or whatever. But this is on the uh, um, ZF right now, 40 millimeters. I look pretty good, but the actual view is something like this. Okay, so the difference between 40 millimeter and 50 millimeter is just, uh, I look like I'm cropped in. Uh, also, the fact that uh, both of these cameras don't crop in at 4K 30. When you get to 4K 60, that's a different story. But uh, anyway, we'll get into uh, trials later. So I'm going to go back here. Try to. This is a nice wide shot. I could also go to uh, my FaceTime camera. And put myself in there but you can see a lot of noise in this one and if I look much better if I just go like this you know just bring about the zero so I look much better when I do it that way so um, but this is 1080 and you can notice it's not as sharp as these other two cameras um, what I'm trying to do is show the minimalist way for a setup, let's say if you're on the road. So if I was on the road, you just take a laptop, you have your webcam, and that's if it doesn't freeze on you. I got a mic on here, the Saramonic external, and I'm going to try show you some different things I'm going to be doing with that. But let's get back to um, uh, what I want to talk about. So on the uh, S5 II, if you look at all their lenses, you can see, you know, the 85 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 20, the 60, the kit lens. They all have the same diameter. And so all the lens caps will fit. Of course, the uh, L-mount uh, 
system right here. So this is interchangeable for, let's say, uh, the other brands like Leica or with, uh, oh, I, I could say the um, Sigma. Now they got Blackmagic, DGI, a couple others that joined the uh, alliance. But what I also like is their lens hoods are all just about the same. And when you have it on, you just click on one. And they have a little button on here. It's very easy. And I wish more cameras would do this. So wherever the button is, you just put that on, match it to where the lens is. And, turn, and there you go. You're fully set. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can turn it the other way if you want to do, um, you know, if you want this up. But uh, I, I've tried it a couple of ways where, um, for an example, let's say I want to do it like this because uh, the sun is coming from the side. It won't work. See? So... It's just for the top part on the side. There's very little sun. I like the completely round one uh, where it shades everywhere the same way. That That's the only thing I can see. But I like the button. I like the way uh, it, uh, they all load the same. Uh, just the three lens I have are the same diameter. So... Uh, Anyway, I, I think it's pretty nice. Um, it looks pretty sharp. So if I go to the, uh, um, let's see, I was on the wrong camera. So this is the uh, 50 millimeter F1.8. Okay. And the other camera is on F2, 40 mil. But if you notice, okay. When I first move in, I shake a little bit, I stutter, but now I'm okay because it's warmed up, it's doing the right feed. So that's one thing I wanted to discuss. The other thing for a minimal setup, let's say if you're going to do a live stream and you bring cameras with you, I always recommend adapters. So this one, and I've already taken it out. Just to show you. Okay. So, depending on how the HDMI port is set up. Um, this right here is kind of like an L bracket. Or L shape. So, you get the cable here. It's plugged in. And then it'll go out to the front. So, that way it doesn't take the whole screen what you're viewing. Uh difference between and a lot of people don't talk about this the difference between micro hdmi and the full hdmi is the full hdmi bracket takes more space okay of the screen real estate so it blocks part of your view and especially if you have information on the left hand side and you can't see it you have to go like this okay but Panasonic is good because what they did was they put it on the top and they put it on the bottom. And on the top, I don't see anything that's blocking that part. So I have this bracket on instead because their door is very good. It's well made, but it's uh, I don't want to break it. So when I put in the uh, HDMI port, this part hits the door and can't go in all the way. So you have to get this type of bracket where it goes into the computer and the cable goes up. Now, they have different styles. This one's going up. They have one where it'll go down to. Okay? That's the same thing with this. So basically, what they're trying to do is it won't go back um uh, hit the lcd screen if you have a flippy screen but uh it, it, it's interesting uh just want to show you that also if you have 
like this micro HDMI to a regular HDMI. If you're not plugged into the uh, Elgato cam link directly, you get another HDMI cable to extend it. And these extenders from Walmart are very cheap and they're excellent. The only other thing I can say is, now these are full size HDMIs, okay? I got, uh, when I tried this earlier, it didn't work. And the reason I found out was that it was an aluminum connection to this gold and it didn't work. So what I did was I had a gold uh, cable, um, you know, HDMI cable, and I connected and now everything is working. That's the only other thing I want to suggest is there's little things that happen that... Um, ruin everything and it's just minor detail that maybe a lot of people can't explain at the store when you buy products like this you have to look well, is it going up is it going down you look at the camera you look to see if there's anything blocking your information that is important to you you have to take all that in effect now i'm going to do um, kind of like a live demo thing real quick and let's see, you go to options, live demo, turn on live demo, and there you go. I see a little red bar around the screen. So now you're seeing what I'm looking at. So I got the Camlink 4K2, which is the S5 II. And the Camlink 4K is the ZF. So you see, it's a little shaking right now so you see a little stuttering okay but then it catches up then they stop stuttering so i think it's a um what's happening is uh, ecamm live pro is always being updated and they add more features and the reason why i want to turn this on is to show some people are saying hey is it slowing down i got it was slowing down my M3 Max MacBook Pro, which worked great before the update. And this is what I had to do. So if you go to your uh, cameras, you see this included switcher. All these were marked and it slowed down my computer. Okay. Uh, when I had it plugged into, I had those turned off before the update. So somehow... All those came up, and they're trying to push the quick access to switch the uh, the cameras. And basically, all you need is one camera, one good camera, okay? But I got two of them right here. I got the ZF, and then I got the uh, S5 II. Uh, anyhow, I just want to show you that. That's if you're having some problems. I put my uh, camera... Um, effects right here to the right my um, sound effects right here so i can play different musics and then of course i have my cameras and then my volume right here and then if i want to add any text i just go here some people do it here i can go into the configuration and let's say you want to go to your stream as you can see it's uh not highlighted but this is at 4K, 16 by 9, 30 FPS. And if, let's say, since I'm not recording, but if I change it to 60 FPS, it will not do a live stream because the Elgato won't allow it. Okay? And you'll be warned that, hey, it won't work, you know, with this program. Uh, the other thing is, while you're recording, you know, you can assign, you record all broadcasts, and I don't have anything assigned here for camera A, B, or C. Apply camera effects to recorded video scenes. And, you know, they have a record only countdown. And um, uh, my video fo recording file format is movie. It's an MP4. Uh, let's see. Uh, on the video, 
I got a cross dissolve and uh, you can make it slower or whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. Fade out and finish. Uh, show picture in picture if you start a new scene. Uh, the audio is the one that I want to show you. On the mic delay, I got it set at two or three. And then uh, when sharing with the scene, um, enable echo cancellation for external speakers. Or, you know, it's just different settings that you have to look at. Interview. Uh, Play ring chime, send guests to green room, screen sharing. Uh, I disabled the desktop icons. I can clue the picture though, which uh, you see all the time when I end the broadcast or uh, start it. And then, uh, but anyway, I just want to show you all this stuff. So, I didn't show general or anything. It just showing you different things what this program can do. So I'm using this external mic and I'm going to unplug it and I'll go to the MacBook Air. And as you can see, it's a two prong. Well, it's two prong to the microphone. It's a three prong for the Apple and it will only work. And I'll give you an example. If I get, let's say, and it should be on the MacBook Air. All right. So, if I got a regular two to two, it will not work. So, two will work into the, the other microphone. This is a Rode Micro. I forget what it's called. The... Uh, Video micro, yeah, okay. Made in Australia. And it's on the external MacBook Pro microphone. Now I'm gonna plug this in. Okay, it did not recognize this. And plus the fact that if I change it to external, it doesn't show it. So you need a three prong. So if I just, Remove this cable, and let's say I just use, just unplug it from back here, from the first one, put in the two. Now if I plug this in with the, all right, the external microphone just came back on, and this is without fluffy. Now, Fluffy's kind of big for this, but do I sound better? And if you notice on the uh, reason why I don't use this is the stuff that they use to hold this, uh, it works on my um, camcorder, which I bought it with, but you can't mount it on a joist or on a tripod. It's a different setting. You would have to get like a different one where, you know, it kind of clamps down on here. So I just hold this, okay? So does my voice sound better? Or does it sound better like this? There's another thing that I'm gonna try. So this originally comes on the Ceremonic. I'm just gonna put it here. Now how does my voice sound? So it, it just that, that you saw. Now it went back to the MacBook Pro microphone, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is you you saw both of these. I'm at the MacBook Air, and I'm going to just do the wind muffler or the dead cat or whatever you want to call it. So I. See external microphone automatically and that's plugged in now how does my voice sound so this is without anything how does it sound does it sound better now uh, 
I'm going to plug in. Um, yeah, I don't think this works because uh, I can't get over it. So I'll get this one right here. This is the one that comes with the ceremonic. So I'm going to put this on. And I'm going to mute it real quick so I don't uh, make too much noise. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the MacBook Pro microphone. I'm going to put this in. And believe me, this would cause a lot of noise. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the external microphone. Right there. And now how do I sound? So you have a good comparison between the different uh, things you can do for your setup with the, just with the MacBook Air or MacBook laptops with different microphones and the difficulties. I talked about the HDMI cable a little bit, about the LCD screens, and um, talked about the lens mount on the... Uh, um, Leica, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Panasonic and how I like it. So I have the 50 millimeter, 85 millimeter, and the 20 to 60 kit lens. Okay, just for Panasonic right now. This is a great camera. It has a great IBIS. It has good uh, digital also. It has a lot of features for uh, the video. But, uh, and this is the ZF. I should be talking, put it on this camera right here, okay? So, like I said, 50 millimeter f1.8. How do I look? And I got it like on the LUT thing where it's built into the camera. So I'm trying this out. It looks me pretty good, but if I mess with the uh, temperature and the saturation, okay, watch what happens. I'm a little bit too bright. That's the only thing is this camera. And, but you got to remember, a LUT gives you a little white wash, and then you can color grade it. So this is what you're actually looking at. And uh, I got to remind myself, I got the LUT on, so I look a little too bright. But when you go on to the camera, or let's say an external TV and stuff, it looks totally different. And I did notice that on the virtual um, stuff out that um, before what I would see didn't show up on the TV, you know, the same colors. And now it does. So it's just a little tidbit of more information that uh, they're always updating their software and they're correcting features. Before, I looked better on the TV than I did on the laptop, but I think they corrected that. And uh, the nice thing about uh, the two brothers is you can write them, give them messages and stuff like that, and they'll look into it and they'll try to fix it. But uh, enough on the microphones. I'm going to leave that hood on. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is do you need an external mic with the camera? So with external mics, they're two prong. All right. That's the way the cameras are built. They're not like Apple where it has three, where you can have headphones and a microphone. So you got a shoe out there. You can put cages on there and, and add an extra shoe. They got shoes where they add extra shoes. I got a shoe that, or a reflector, which I can add three more, you know, off the hot shoe. So I can see on a tilted camera, you know, with the tilted LCD screen, uh, you know, for a selfie and stuff like that, or for a stream or a vlog that I'm doing, or a video recording, that I can put it on uh, the uh, hot shoe, whatever, and then just add stuff to it. So you can put like light, you can put um, 
uh, a microphone, sh shotgun microphone, wireless, whatever. And uh, you can add extra things to it, like an external monitor. So I thought that was kind of neat, too. Uh, but if you have an external monitor, then you don't really need that reflector. But uh, anyway, uh, that's just to uh, um, talk a little bit about that. The only other thing is uh, the built-in mics on the cameras are excellent. The ZF, S52, they're excellent. Uh, you just have a little wind noise and stuff. But uh, And I have had no problems with the camera on the... Um, you know, when the fan's going, I can't hear it. So, it's nice to see that the Lumix has a fan. You keep the camera from overheating. This little thing was overheating on the ZF. And I've showed this before. It's a um, little fan. You charge it with the uh, micro USB. All right, it stays pretty well charged. It's not that loud unless I make it a higher speeds. But I, w I rotated it yesterday and propped it against the camera because I saw the thermometer. So with the thermometer on the, um, see, second, third, off. With the uh, thermometer on the uh, this camera, Wrong camera, folks. On this camera, is uh, it turns yellow. That's the warning. And then it'll go red, so it's heating up. And then you'll start seeing bars to the right. And I think when it gets to the end, it'll shut down, probably. Um, I have not seen a hot card warning on this, like I do on the Z8. Um, I did see it on the Z62 and Z72 that I own, hot card warning. And those affected the video recording and it shut down the cameras. On the Z8, I've never seen it shut down the camera. But I've used that fan and it went away. So you'll see a lot of Ulanzi fans where people have attached it to the cameras. It fixes their Z Z, uh, ZVE1, um, a couple of other cameras that overheat. Um, the other thing I've noticed is since I have an L bracket for my ZF and it has a place where if I had a door, I could use the dummy battery and close the uh, battery uh, door. Canon put that into their cameras uh, because they want the battery door closed because they don't want the battery falling out, which is a good thing. Uh, on the Foresight with the ZF, they don't have that feature. Um, the 8 they do. ZF, they don't. And there is a place on the L bracket where you can put the wire to the side and it'll go out. Um, and you can... If they would put it in the door, you could have it. Um, and I think you can probably buy a door, you know, for this. And uh, small rig would probably make it. But uh, that's just something to let you know. Uh, I've noticed that on the ZPE10, if I forget to put the SD card in, the camera won't turn on. That's why you have it in the settings. That way, oh, I forgot the memory card which is a good thing. On the ZF, I got the micro SD card, which stays there all the time. So if I forget to put in the uh, regular SD card, it'll write to the second one, which is a nice feature. Uh, in order to get that S micro SD card out, I got to take the battery out, and then I can get the SD card out. And they're, they're tiny, all right? I got a terabyte in there. And I have like, um, I think a 256 gigabyte uh, SD card in here also. On the Panasonic, it's only 128. But I got two of them. 
and with the overflow it's supposed to go from one car to the other but uh, it didn't work out <laughs> I have to look at it in the settings but uh, so I talked about the SD cards that the only other thing is on HDMI hubs okay and a lot of them you have to get an external like I have on you know for the laptops I've had this with the uh, MacBook Air and the um, MacBook 12s okay but it charges everything you know these 30 watt 35 watt it's good uh, it'll do my laptop you know my MacBook Air M1 Max uh, MacBook Air but uh, you would have to charge the hub with this and then the only USB-C port goes into your laptop so with a pro uh, I got three and I have an SD card reader and uh, I have a, a power outlet which is nice so I got three hubs and an HDMI port out so if I want to hook up to an external monitor I can and uh, I've done that too um, did that with the um, and that's the other thing I want to talk about but after I'm done with this oh uh, warning when you get good deals of let's say headphones and stuff this is a very cheap one from Best Buy and I just want to warn you you may want to put on your earplugs because I'm going to just I went to the uh, uh, MacBook Air microphone, and I'm going to plug this in. Okay, I recognized it. It's on the external microphone. And it sounds awful. I can't hear anything, so I have to do with this. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I cannot hear anything on the microphone. And it's all the way out. So, I, my voice is peaking. I can see it's working. But on the microphone part itself, or on the headphones, it's not working. And um, I can go like all the way to the loud. I still can't hear anything. So just warning that not everything works when you buy, so you have to return it. I had these in the box. Yeah, now it's on the MacBook Pro. So, yeah. Uh, or I would return these things. That's why they didn't work out. Um, on the hubs, this is one I'm using now. Uh, it's already plugged in. So I get four extra USB ports, and then I have a connection. Uh, and I'll show you real quick. Let me pause. I forgot that. So as I was saying, you have to get a USB 3 connection or a Thunderbolt. This is Apple's brand. Okay, and I don't know if you can see it. It's white. I think this is USB 2. It might be Thunderbolt. I, I don't know. I don't think it's a 3.2 USB 3. Okay, I don't, I think it's a USB 2 because I have used this for connecting certain cameras and I was getting a lot of stuttering. So I got one. From the company, and I haven't seen it in Best Buy lately because they're sold out. A USB C to USB 3 adapter, and that's what I have it connected to this thing right here. And the thing about this is when you have a USB 3 and you have a USB C port, 
stuff like that. Most USB-Cs, uh, this is a USB 3. All right. So if I plug this in here, that's why you need the different connections. But let's say I have four cameras set up. Okay, I got two right now. So what I do, and since this is a USB 3 at the end, I can plug this in like this with the adapter, okay? Plug it into my uh, extra USB port, and then I have to plug this in for power, okay? So remember I told you you have to have power to get this working right? And then this connects to your computer, gives information or whatever you plug in here. I've done this before on the M1 MacBook Air, and I had like eight, let's see. Yeah, I had two of these connected together. So I had eight, nine, 10. I, I think I had, yeah, 10 external cameras on my video and I had the uh, webcam, a total of 11. Who figured? But I go to the extreme, okay? Uh, the other thing, now you notice this is USB uh, 3, so you get the adapter, which I put on the floor, and you can plug this in, and this is for an AC, CF Express card, it, it, or it could be a hard drive or or something that's old that you've had. So you need a converter, and you just plug it into the USB-C, or your Thunderbolt, and now you have another place to transfer. So you have to be, you have to carry adapters from USB 3 to USB-C. Uh, uh, you have to uh, have power to your hubs. So, I've used this. It works great for uh, network. That's the only thing it's missing out of this laptop. Is I wish they had a built-in uh, network. But you see, it takes up um, a space. But it gives me two more USB 3s, an HDMI out, which I don't need, the network thing. And I got one just for a network, all right? But uh, then... This is where the external power goes in. I've used it with just out that, but it, it does help with external power, especially when you're running other cameras. And then it has the micro SD and SD card. And this is, um, you get this from Best Buy also. And they usually sell it with the Apple stuff. Um, basically, I've talked about that, that, and... The next important things are cables for your uh, BGI out. So, there you can get the regular HDMI out to, let's say, a TV or your external monitor, okay? Just want to warn you, uh, with the older laptops, it may only do 4K30. Okay, not 4K60. With this newer one, I can do the 4K60. I can put up my uh, little monitor, the 24-inch, the one that I talked about, the new iMac, on some of my other videos. And it'll work with this, with this new laptop. On the older laptops, you may only get 4K30. So how do you... If you have a, let's say, a big TV, which I was dealing with last night, you have a USB-C or Thunderbolt input, okay? And these are Best Buys also, okay? USB-C, DisplayPort, all right? So most of the uh, 4K dis have DisplayPort that can do 4K60 automatically. Because the HDMI wouldn't be able to. 
They only do 4K 30. That's with older TVs. Okay. With also the USB-C, this gives you a 60 hertz output. All right. To the TV. It won't work on old monitors and stuff. But it will work on all the newer TVs. So if you have a, a PC monitor, because none of the TVs have a display port that I know of. Um, you need one for that. And then for certain new monitors that use HDMI, uh, I think it's uh, HDMI 3, I think now. Uh, I don't know if any of them is out, though, for the cables. I know they have the 2.1. But uh, on the... Um, Display port, 1.4 or more, okay? And uh, I think it can do a 1.3, all right, for TVs. On the uh, newer TVs that are coming out with their faster HDMI, and this is what you need for that. Um, well, anyway, that's the video I'm going to show next time, and an unboxing of a TV that broke. Uh, I had a X800E uh, TV from Sony and one day it just wouldn't turn on and it was a component on the inside. So they didn't have any components of the guy that was working on it. So he bought me a new TV and I says, well, this isn't the same model that I gave him. And I looked at it it was a 2018 model, and I got me a 2023 model instead for about 350 bucks. I don't care, just as long as it works, okay? I don't need the extra features and stuff. I just want kind of like a small TV, 40-inch, whatever, if I decide to use it. Um, it was basically going to go back into the uh, office, but I got that... Uh, the newer six or the uh, uh, 55 inch, I think it was a 60S, okay? And um, it's either that or the T, I can't remember. But um, what would happen was I would have one remote, turn it on, and it would tur either turn one monitor TV off, which was two other Samsungs, or turn it on. And that was the problem. With this new TV, I turn it on, the other two didn't come on because it's on a different frequency. I was happy. So now I have two 55-inch TVs in there. One is uh, the S95B from last year, which is an excellent TV. Uh, I was going to go to one higher up, but then I said, you know what? I'm seeing a lot of stuttering and juddering, and I went with the cheaper model, and I'm happy with it. it it's sharp. Okay, so that's the other thing. So that's enough of my rant. Uh, if I showed you all the gear that I have and all the different bags that I use to carry around. So on my retro camera, I got the 40 millimeter on there now. I got the 28 millimeter and the 26 millimeter. This case came with the Sigma Trio, which is APS-C, the 16 millimeter, 30 millimeter, and 56 millimeter, which is a great case. But I got it in a camera uh, backpack for the uh, Sony. Uh, the only th other thing is the 23 millimeter, but I got that with the uh, Sony also in their backpack. So. I usually put full frame in one backpack and um, APS-C in another backpack. I got the big case where I have all the full frame lenses for Nike or Nikon, but uh, I got some of the lenses out here too. But I bought extra ones too. And I have the extra ones for the studios and they stay on the camera all the time. And uh, it's the best focal length, 28, 40 millimeter. Uh, I'll sometimes put the 26 or change it out. But uh, I can put 
a 50 millimeter on here also. And, but I just want to show you the difference if it's sharper or not. So this is the uh, Nikon. And I will get out a live demo mode because I'm done with that. So I go to options. Oh, this is the other thing I want to show you. On a MacBook, I said, oh, there's got to be something here, right? No. The way they do it is they take this part. This is actually next to it, but it skips over the uh, this part right here. So I thought that was interesting. I was playing around with it. But you see, this is usually next to this one, like this. But I just skip over. No problem. It's just a learning curve because I got a big black thing right here with the camera and stuff like that. And uh, if I do the camera. Come on. All right. Now I see a green light come on and it's telling me it's on. It's something to... Uh, also let you know so this is 1080p the other two are 4k 30 and they're in manual and they're at 150th of a shutter speed so that's the other experiment i'm going to be doing so let me turn off live demo mode so we'll go out to options and turn it off and now you see me on a full screen now this is uh the other test i like doing showing people Oh, so I got a camera bag here for the retro. I should get something like this, but then I um, have, uh, you know, I can put the, the lenses in here in one pocket, the camera in the other one, the batteries and stuff. So this is my sling bag from Think Tank, All right? I got three of these now. I'm thinking of getting the fourth one for the retro, but... Uh, and then I have one for uh, the laptop, but I got a backpack for that too, where I can carry my M1 MacBook Air. But uh, you can see all the different things that you have to take along with you when you pack. Let's say you go on a, a trip and it's a lot of stuff. So what you need is one like a suitcase, and then you pack everything in the suitcase. But then it's a hassle, because then you take the suitcase wherever you go to shoot, and you have to move the underwear, the shaving stuff. Oh, there's the camera. Just saying. So a lot of people, what they do is they'll just take one lens, and they'll put it on the camera. And like they said on the stream last night, uh, they're very worrisome about being robbed, so they don't want all their gear together. They just want one thing. So I'm going to shoot with the 180 to 600, uh, or I'm going to shoot it with just a smaller lens, do street photography or whatever. Um, I like to be multiple. So for any situation, so I'll have the 1 to 400. I like the macro, the 105. And then, of course, I showed you uh, the small compact lenses, which I like using. Um, with all the other lenses, if I would do it on a shoot, it would be on the inside. And it would be like for, um, like, let's say, showing how uh, you install a TV, you know, mounted on the wall. Or selling real estate. You need a certain type of lens to walk around and you need a stable camera that doesn't shake. Some people, they use the tripod and they do a 360 degree view. Uh, they got cameras for that. They even have small cameras for that. That can do just an excellent job. But um, anyhow, that's just kind of like an update what I'm doing. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the camera. Okay. So, this is a ZF. All right. First of all, I'm using the MacBook Air. All right. I am haven't tried the... Um, um, see which one sounds better. Either the foam with the Ceramonic or the uh, flip ball. 
if it sounds better. But uh, I'm going to plug this back in. Yep. And there we go. Okay. So this is the hood for the uh, ceramic. So what am I going to do? We were, I was discussing with Peter Grigg last night uh, with the updates with this uh, program that I, I'm using right now to show this video. That, uh, you know, I've always noticed that when it first changes, you get a little stuttering, but then it's working out. So why am I at 1 50th of shutter speed instead of 1 60th? 1 60th is the lighting problems and stuff, plus it doubles the 4K 30, which gives you a better um, viewing. But I'm going to show you two things. It doesn't really matter. If you're not carrying it or motioning, all right, 4K 24 is good. Because you're usually just sitting down or you're standing up. The only thing that's moving is basically your lips, your body a little bit, and then your hands. Okay? But you notice? No stuttering. All right? And I'm not getting out of focus unless I go like, like this. All right? But it gets back in focus. I also don't have the light on. So I'm trying, and I have glass back here. So I have a lot of stuff that can distract to see if I can get out of focus. But this is at one fifth of the shutter speed. And this camera, Z5, S5 II, see it stuttered a little bit. Okay, so it's stuttering now. But remember I told you that I had the gold um, plate on there? I have an older cable where they say gold was the best for transferring. Not really. It doesn't matter. But you notice, I'm not centering now. So you have to wait like, when you change cameras, you look at the camera and you don't move. You can breathe. You can talk to it. But you know, you just, now I can move and everything's stable. So I'm going to change it to 1 30th of a sure speed. Then I'm going to 1 40th. Back, and since you've already seen this whole video broadcast on uh, or recording at sure speed at 50, then I'll go to 60. And um, we'll see if there's a difference. So this is 1 50th. And I'm going to go to the Panasonic, bring it all the way down to 1 30th. And then I'll just go up 10, 30, 40. We've already done 50. Then I'll go to 60. Now, this is 1 30th of a shutter speed, and I'm brighter. Pretty bright. Yeah, if you go to um, this one, I love the colors of Nikon. I got nothing changed on the settings, all right? But you notice, now it's smoothing out. There's a little stuttering at the beginning for like maybe 5 to 10 seconds, and then it smooths out, okay? So if I go back to the S5 II, if I don't move, I'm perfect. But once I start doing this, you see just a little stuttering. And then it goes away. It's 4K 30. Okay. So I'm a little, this is in the vlog mode. Okay. And I haven't color graded. But as you can see, 4K30 gives you more light, and it's smooth. Now I'm going to go to 140. So it should. It might have gotten a little bit darker. 
What you notice? It didn't stutter, did it? So what they told you is one sixtieth. You needed the double the speed. Now let's go to the other camera that's at one fiftieth of the shutter speed. See, you see the stutter, okay? But then it goes away. Have to wait. Okay. All right. So let's go back to uh, S52. See a little stuttering. And then it smooths out. This is one fourth of a shutter speed. Okay. So since the other camera is at uh, one fiftieth, I'll go to one sixtieth on here now. Okay, so I'm not as bright as before, but I'm one sixtieth of a shutter speed. Okay, now this is nothing. All right, when you do it on the camera and it's live stream, you won't see any stuttering. It's smooth as glass. Okay, that's either on 130, 40, 50, whatever. If I just change the shutter speed, the program recognizes it and then it cor corrects everything. It's at the right speed. Now I'm going to go to the ZF, which is at 1 50th. So you see, you see the stuttering as normal, like I was saying. And you wait 5 to 10 seconds, probably 10 seconds. And I see it's smooth. Okay. Now let's go to uh, back to the uh, S52. See, you see a little stuttering, but it's not as bad. Okay, but you see, I just smoothed out. So, just repeat. You get your camera good. You just remember that uh, with the software and stuff, uh, they're always updating. Uh, you undo the stuff you're not going to use. Like, uh, I'm not going to do the switching of the cameras. I'll do it manually like I did when I showed you on live demo mode. Uh, some people like just the switching and stuff. I think it takes too many resources especially if you're working off a laptop. Uh, something that's plugged in like the M1 uh, Max or the, uh, you know, like the Mac Studios I have or the uh, Mac Minis or even the iMac, that's a different story, all right? They're plugged in all the time. With the laptops and stuff, you have to worry about. And the more stuff that you use on the USB or the Thunderbolt, out or the USB-C or whatever, um, more power it does, the the computer's going to slow down. So I got it plugged in right now, and the way I have it is I got an extension cord to a six-plug um, surge protector. All right, six outlet. So I'm have this computer. Those two cameras, all right, and that hub, four of them on that. And I got two plugs that I can add, which means I got to add two more cameras, which I have two more holdouts on the uh, USB 3. I also have a USB-C uh, extra 
if I want to plug another camera in. Um, or I could do it like another hub. So if I put another hub on here, two cameras there, so that would be four with the uh, FaceTime. It would be five. I keep looking at the wrong camera. Um, then I could add four more. That's nine. And if I would have uh, put a hub to it, all right, then I could add maybe four more to that. <laughs> if Apple allows me. So, uh, 13 cameras, I might do it. I got them. But uh, the mess that I would do is pull it out, bring it here, to show it off. But as you can see, everything's working fine. Everything looks good. I've been ranting for about an hour. And this is kind of like a, a live stream. All right. The only thing is I'm not answering any questions. I just want to put out the uh, little things that I've learned uh, with uh, dealing with computers, power supplies, hubs, stuff like that, cameras. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Remember, if you like this type of content, please give me a like, subscribe. Any questions or comments, put it down in the comment section below. No, I didn't put time codes on there and stuff like that. Um, I'm working on that. I have to learn. But uh, anyhow, thank you for watching. And remember, stay safe, keep smiling, and until next time, I shall see you then. Goodbye, folks. Have a wonderful day. I have to put it on the right setting.